In this lecture, we will learn about the command design pattern and how to implement it in Python. Command is a behavioral design pattern. The command design pattern enables an object to encapsulate all of the information needed to perform an action later on. When do we use the command design pattern? This pattern is used when we want to parameterize objects with operations. We can also use it when we want to queue operations, schedule their execution, or execute them remotely. We can also use the command pattern when we want to implement reversible operations. Let's look at the pros and cons of using the command design pattern. The advantages of using this pattern are that we can decouple classes that invoke operations from classes that perform these operations. We can introduce new commands without breaking existing client code. We can implement undo and redo functionality. We can implement deferred execution. And we can assemble a set of simple commands into a complex one. The disadvantage of using this pattern is that the code may become more complicated since you are introducing a whole new layer between senders and receivers. Now let's learn how to implement the command design pattern using Python code. Up at the top of the program, we will import ABC and abstract method from the ABC module by typing from ABC, import ABC, comma, abstract method. Next, we are going to create a base class command. This command class will be the base that each specific type of command will inherit from. In essence, this class is the blueprint for what a command should look like in code. We will use the class keyword to name our class command. It will take in one parameter, ABC. Next will come the abstract method annotation, which will apply to an execute function that takes in the self parameter. Since each concrete command class will explicitly implement this function, we can just use the pass keyword so that our function is just a stub without any meaningful code inside of it. Next, we will implement our first concrete command class. The class will be named hello command and will extend the command class that we just created. The syntax for this is to type command inside of parentheses after the class name. Our class will define the init function that takes in one parameter, self. Inside of the init method, we will set the name attribute to the string hello. Then we will define an execute function that also takes in a self parameter. Note that this execute function will be the concrete implementation of the abstract method we stubbed out in the base command class. For a hello command, the execute function will print hello world. Now let's create another concrete command, a goodbye command. We will use the class keyword and create a goodbye command that extends the base command class. This class will define an init function that sets its name attribute to the string goodbye. It will also implement the execute function, and inside of this function we will print goodbye world to the console. After that we will create a class named invoker. This class will define a get command function that takes in two parameters, self and action. If the action is equal to the string hello, then we know that the command is the hello command. So we will create a variable named command and set it equal to a new instance of our hello command class. Else if the action is equal to the string goodbye, we will set command equal to an instance of the goodbye command class. Outside of the if and elif statements at the bottom of the function, we will return command. Time to test our code. We will create a variable named invoker and set it equal to an instance of the invoker class. Then we will create a variable named command1 and set it equal to invoker.getCommand with the string hello passed in. We will call command1.execute to execute the command. Then we will create a variable named command2 and set it equal to invoker.getCommand with the string goodbye passed in. Finally, we will call command2.execute. When we run the code, you will notice that hello world was printed to the console as a result of command1 being executed and goodbye world was printed to the console as a result of command2 being executed. Great work! You now know how to implement the command design pattern using Python code. In the next lecture, we will learn about the interpreter design pattern and how to implement it in Python.